One, two, three, four, get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, gonna shine, life is good. I'm doing five, ten, gonna do it right and do it again, yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me, so gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out, I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning that turns into a beautiful evening. And together make a beautiful life. And if you wanna see, then come along with me, that's right. And I'm so excited about this particular episode because this week we're talking a lot about the art. That's one of my favorite things to do. And so this week we are going to be checking out not only the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra, they have an awesome event coming up. We're also going to be uh, checking out the Box Factory for the Arts. That's really exciting too. And then Elkhart is putting on their Art Walk. This is one of my favorite things that happens once a month. Excited to show you that. But first, we're going to be uh, rounding things up. Yeah, that's right. It's time to head to the stables, checking out Ann Cole Training Center, where I get a little bit rowdy. Well, I'm used to always telling my kids, no horsing around, but here at the Ann Cole Training Center, we're horsing around we here, are. aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. And this is Ann Cole. I'm so excited to finally oh, meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You have a, a lot of experience in the horse world. Yeah, I'm getting old, basically. <laughs> no. Yes, I've been around horses since I was a little girl and always been passionate and started teaching the neighbor kids and my sisters when I was probably 10 or 11. And you're from this area originally, right? Yes, I'm from Granger, Indiana. Okay, yeah. so it's great to have a place like this in our area. We're in Niles, Michigan here, yeah. and you have a great facility here. Tell us a little Thank bit you. about what you offer here at the facility. Yeah, so we teach the fundamentals of horsemanship. Uh, one of our niches is that we give people a really fun, safe, first experience around horses. Uh, we offer lots of camps and lessons for children and we also get those adults back in the saddle again <laughs> or we work on their bucket list. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a great one too. And right behind us, they're doing a spring break camp right now. Yeah. So what kinds of things does a camp entail? So this is spring break horsemanship camp and we do a lot of fundamentals of horsemanship. The kids learn how to groom the horses, put their saddles on, and then they learn to ride, as you can see in the background. They also have been cleaning stalls, sweeping okay. the barn. Learning how to care for the horse. Care for horses, too. yeah. Okay, awesome. And I know some of the little ones are over here, too. You want to yeah. take a look over at them? These are our stations, and we're learning right here how to mount and dismount. Okay. You can see her getting off the horse, which is called dismounting. Uh-huh. And they're getting it down. Yeah, they're and this is Spanky, our pony, and Allie, who helps us. Awesome. She's awesome. a great teacher and very patient with the children. <laughs> she is. Awesome. So as they're learning this process, you know, how does that begin to develop their self-esteem, too? Yeah, yeah. I know that's a big thing, of course. Yeah. Right? Horses are amazing animals. They build so much confidence in kids and adults. and self-esteem and they just are a wonderful thing to be around a wonderful animal to be around uh, i have people tell me that it's their best moment of their week when they come here oh, and those really? are people of all ages not just children yeah. yes the horses bring you this peace and serenity that some people can't find anywhere else so tell us about the training program because it starts as young as these little ones too right yeah. there are some options for the littlest ones yeah even. we have a preschool program called mommy and me and pony makes three and that's for three four and five year olds Perfect. and then our after school lesson program runs monday through friday and that's for kids six and up all the way through adult of all ages. That's amazing that you guys offer that. Uh, and what's your favorite part of doing this? I think my favorite part is the rewarding part or the aspect that some of these kids would never get to be around horses if it weren't for our barn. And they live in neighborhoods with sidewalks and they don't get real dirty. So I love yeah, to see them getting dirty. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the best thing. I just got my cowboy boots recently. Oh, so cool. I, I got to dirty them up a little bit today. <laughs> we can help you with that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think we're going to learn some things today. Are we okay. going to try some roping? Yes, we have a, a roping program. Uh, Chuck, who helps us as well, taking care of all the horses. He is he and his wife do team roping as okay. a sport, and they compete a lot. And oh, he wow. has been he started a program in the barn this winter called Roping 101, and it's for beginners to learn how to handle okay. and start their roping career. Yeah. So, as far as the different kinds of lessons that you do offer here, do you do Western? What are the different styles that you're offering? Yeah, we here? 
teach Western as well as English. English, Hunt okay. Seat. Okay, you do. And are you jumping in here? We do a little bit of jumping. Okay. As once you get your fundamentals, we can go into jumping. Yeah, that's not for me. <laughs> I'm not Stay there. Low. <laughs> Stay, Stay nice low. and low. Stay on the ground. Nice and easy, yeah. nice and steady. Yeah. And that's I just awesome. want it to be a really fun, safe, educational atmosphere to be around the horses. And where can people get more information if they want to sign up for lessons or for any of your summer camps that are coming up? Yeah, all our information is on my website, Ann Cole Training Center, and you can find camps, clinics, the roping, everything that we offer. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. You're I welcome. think Thank I'm ready you. to rope around now. Okay, sounds great. <laughs> so, Chuck, you are the instructor for Roping 101. Correct. And uh, how? Uh, tell me more about your experience with roping. Oh, been doing it probably I don't know, 15 years okay. or so. Uh, we train our own horses. Sorry, my phone just went off. <laughs> but uh, we got, between my wife and I, we probably got 50 years or better horse oh my experience. Gosh. Okay, sure. She barrel races and ropes, and I rope and barrel race maybe once a year. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, we're she, not barrel racing today. No, you're, you're just going to teach uh, me some basics roping, right? But, through the horses, it got me into the roping. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a journey for sure. So, yeah. And I just like to share the sport I love. You know, it's been pretty good to me. So, the people are great, and I, I've got wonderful friends through awesome. and memories. And, and I think that's the biggest thing uh, of all of this, too, is really you really make lifelong friends, too. That is right? it. That's more important yeah. than all the buckles yeah. or, or the money you could win, you know. So, <laughs> yep. All right, let's well, see if I can earn my buckle today. So, yeah, yeah, let's see. <laughs> So remember down low. Down low. Yeah. Am I getting it? Yeah, it's better. It's not bad. Woo! All right. Okay, now the next step, I'm gonna have you stand right here. Oh. I don't want you to let go of this. Okay. And this part here, I want you to put underneath the, the right horn. Just. Okay, and don't let go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Try that once. You guys can watch me do this. Oh, here Just we go. Just make sure you scoop the bottom of that horn. Step a little closer. Uh, Snoop. Nope. That's right. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, close. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I did it backwards, but I still got him in there. Try it again. Try it again. You'll, right, get, right. you'll get it. It's, it's, this, this teaches you like your release point. So it's this like, is why you guys do the whole lesson. Now, right? the secret like, is okay, your what's pinky controls this bottom strand that goes there oh. so okay see if that helps you all right try hand down thumb down yep oh. no nope. try and focus on the you want to catch it right here the pinky to there oh Ooh, almost go ahead. You. lower lower yeah see we did it <laughs> <laughs> so all right you show us again you show us a professional you're much better than i am well i, I was just going to have you Swing and do that. It so it's just this motion here. Okay. Well, that seems easier. So I have terrible hand-eye coordination. Wait, now I have to really think about it. Nope. There, hey, yes, yes, you felt it. it that time, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot harder than it looks, huh? It is, it, is. it really is. I've, I, teaching people, I've done it before and, you know, I'll. I'll do it and I'll be like, uh, don't do it like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, but try it again. Try it again. All right, one more time. One more time. Let me get my hand in the right position. Together, pinky down, thumb down. All right, you guys ready for this one? This is going to be the winner. I can feel it. Yes, Woo! yes, there yes. Okay, <laughs> now one more step to progress. From there, we're going to move. We were here. We're going to move back one step. I'm going to have you swing. And try and. Oh, you have big goals there, Chuck. So. <laughs> All right. Let's see how we go. Okay, thumbs down. A little closer. Got my wrist. A little closer. Square up. Bring your your right leg to me. Yep, because you'll be if you're roping, you're on a horse beside the steer. No. Nope. Oh, hey, him. you hit the horns. That's better than most people yeah, do first time they good. throw. Well, if people want to sign up for any of the classes or the workshops, they can do that on the website? Correct, yes, on Ann's uh, page, the Ann Cole Training Center page. And then you get more than two minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, this I was have. a crash course. So I promise you'll be crash better than course. me. <laughs> uh, we've been having a lot of fun with that. We've met some really cool people, 
the, the age diversity has been super cool. The youngest, oh, I think, was that. nine, and the oldest, the oldest we had was 68, I believe. So That's awesome. Men, women, uh, we've taught left-handed ropers how to rope right-handed. It's, it's been oh. a journey. It's been pretty cool. Awesome. All right, well, thanks so much for giving us a, a short little lesson you here. And, hey, I, at least I got it one time. That's not too bad. You did awesome. <laughs> you did really good. It is a beautiful day in downtown Elkhart, and I'm here with Ashley from Premier Arts to talk about the return of Art Walk. This is one of downtown Elkhart's favorite activities. Yeah, it sure is. Seven different events throughout April, from April all the way to October, mm -hmm. and uh, we just bring out the whole town. They love to see the art. We have a vibrant arts community down here in Elkhart. What does it mean to the town and all the businesses to actually have people down here, though? Honestly, some of our biggest partners are the merchants along Main Street because mm -hmm. we bring so many people down that sales tick up and and, you know, they offer some nice things within their stores, you know, different discounts yeah. and even live musicians. So it's a lot of fun. And it is a great way to support local downtown businesses because I know they need our support. And, you know, sometimes they don't always get all the support they need and they exactly. create local jobs and they support local events and local nonprofits. So yep. it's a feel good all, all the way around. So what actually happens during Art Walk? I know it's pretty obvious art walk but <laughs> but to anyone watching this never been like what do we actually do sure so we celebrate all different mediums of art so mm -hmm. we have visual artists that will be here on Civic Plaza in a sort of artisan market where people can walk through and see their beautiful work mm -hmm. and purchase if they'd like yep. um, we have a, a through a partnership with the learner we have a concert on the green that's gonna happen yeah. um, for six of the seven weeks uh, that we're gonna be downtown and it's gonna be a giant concert people just bring their picnic blankets and lots of fun um, happy family type activities. We're going to be doing a family art project every mm -hmm. month nice. um, to get the kids involved. And uh, honestly, we're going to have dance and dance lessons, theatrical events. I mean, we're really celebrating all different kinds of art. Look, I know that the dance lessons are at that that's dancing right yes. just down the street and I actually went there uh, during the date night that happened oh, here yeah. and my wife forced me to go along <laughs> and but I actually loved it yeah so to any man watching who was like <laughs> me has two left feet and does not want to dance you should go along but uh, what are some of the other things like like the dancing that that are happening as well sure they'll be um, we're also going to be inviting different partners from local dance studios so we're gonna have kids performing we're gonna have um, amazing artists that are here to not only perform musically but you know show their wares um, you can see small musical acts along Main Street in the different stores cool. which will be kind of nice as you're shopping and mm -hmm. maybe sipping on some wine that kind of thing um, and then in the lobby of the library we're gonna have we're gonna be featuring student artwork oh. as well as a craft there and they'll have a whole display of theme themed appropriate books as well hey I know a deck is just here any art from yes. a deck is yes. Yes, they've on? already signed up. We nice. love we love ADEC art. It's so love wonderful. It. Yeah. I love that. I love that program. Always highlighting. I know they just celebrate their 70th birthday as well, helping yes. people in the area. So and they're right here on Main Street, so it's perfect. So when is it actually going to be on? When does it start and what night of the week sure, is it? Sure. It's the last Thursday. This is a change from previous years. Okay, so it's yeah. the last Thursday of the month, April through October. Mm -hmm. So we start April 28th, and it's what we would call a soft open because with the weather, you never know. We're not having <laughs> yeah. a concert on the green for April, for one, yeah. but we are going to have our artisan market. We're going to have the things going on in the library and a Long Main Street so it's gonna be a, a great time and then May we're kicking it off with a big bang with a really fun concert because I know that over the last couple of years like everything I'm kind of so tired of even talking about it at this stage <laughs> but you know our walk was affected by it and a lot of people didn't know whether it was on or not so right it's good to have it back yeah, absolutely. And Premier Arts has taken on the logistics of Art mm -hmm. Walk. So we're just so excited to kind of level up all of the programming to make sure that we're diversifying what's offered and the kinds of audience that we're bringing downtown. And we've highlighted a lot of different artists from sculptors and different artists on mm -hmm. the show. And Elkhart County actually has a lot of, I want to almost say hidden art, uh, because there really is a lot of art in Elkhart County. Yeah, it's just a hidden gem. We have beautiful <laughs> galleries right here on Main yeah. Street. In Elkhart, we have the Midwest Museum of Art right, you know, just across the street. So there'll be a location as well. I mean, it is, uh, it's a gem in Northern Indiana mm -hmm. to come down, visit our beautiful downtown, our Riverwalk. You know, mm -hmm. it's just going to be fabulous. 
I think downtown Elkhart is absolutely beautiful. Just being here today makes me happy too. If people want to get more information about this, how can mm -hmm. they? They can go to El ElkhartArtWalk.com. Okay. They can check us out on Facebook. They can check us out on the Premier Arts uh, website as well. We are, you know, there should be no shortage of information in <laughs> no. the community. So there is a little special theme for April as well that I know about. So who yes. are we going to find out information from? So Tanner Smale is going to come to talk to you about our Art is My Superpower theme okay. for April. Is that the guy wearing the weird clothing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's go and see him. All right. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with Tanner to find out about the theme for April. Tanner, what is the theme? The theme for April is Art is My Superpower. What exactly are you dressed as? I have to ask this first. Gambit from X-Men. Oh, I, I thought you were going skiing. Well, it's a little warm. <laughs> you know, we did have snow two days ago, so I guess I could have. So how did yeah. you come up with this theme? Well, we were trying to find themes for Art Walk that would bring different kinds of people downtown, different cultures, and mm -hmm. um, many people don't know that there is a strong geek culture here in oh, Elkhart. Yeah. I mean, Comic-Con was just here. Yeah, and it was huge, <laughs> well attended, always is, and so we want to give another opportunity for people to express that kind of art. Yep. And so while we're partnering with Hall of Heroes Superhero Museum, yep. they are our main partner for April, very excited. We're going to bring down comic book artists. We're nice. going to have cosplayers all over the place. They're going to have a booth so you can learn more about them. I think they'll even be selling some discounted tickets to the museum as well. Um, but then along with that, we'll have a cosplay contest nice. so that everybody should dress as their favorite <laughs> superhero or character or villain. And uh, we're really excited because that'll be a youth option as well as an adult option. So grown-ups, I know you like to dress up. <laughs> I want to yeah. look back at this amazing stage that's back here. And I want to talk to Amber from The Learner about some of the concerts and events that are going to be going on here. But Tanner, thank you so much. Thanks for dressing up and you rock it. Hey, thanks. Got to whip it out every so often. <laughs> so although Art Walk starts at the end of April, there's no concert series at the end of April, but that does start in May. Amber, you're from The Learner, so Learner on the Lawn is going to be happening here. It's such a beautiful space with the stage here and everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going to be going on. Yeah, so the, it starts in May and it will go to, through uh, to August and it's a free concert series mm -hmm. that anyone can attend in the community. And we are like having local um, and regional artists that are very like diverse. And uh, we start, we kick off with Hooked Like Helen, which is a yeah. husband-wife duo, and they do pop music and acu very acoustic. And it's going to be a really cool feel. And along with this concert series, we'll also have um, vendors from the downtown area, and then also food trucks. Um, lots of opportunity for people to eat and just enjoy. It's like bring your own blanket and lawn chair kind of vibe and just have fun. Um, and it will start around six o'clock usually. Mm -hmm. So the business crowds, like you said, will be yeah. out and ready to enjoy ready the to, time. Ready to uh, have some social drinking uh, yes. going on afterwards. <laughs> Drink, um, eat, and be merry. And make sure you're here. End of April, last Thursday, there's no concert series then, but there will be every last Thursday after that throughout the summer. So Amber, thank you so much. Thank you. Today we're with Tim King, the executive director of the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra, and this is a very special interview. And the reason why is because it's we're talking about the last concert of the series of yes. the season, but this is our first time meeting in person. I know. Can you believe it? No. We met each other during the pandemic, so we've Zoomed everything until now. I know. <laughs> wow. And plus, this is my first time in the Civic Auditorium. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, there's a lot of history here, too. Yeah. The Civic Auditorium was built in 1930, um, and it has been host to, you name it, concerts, uh, basketball games. They just held a... A national basketball tournament that ESPN uh, carried oh. in, in January. It's been the orchestra's home for a long time and the reason we like the Civic is as you can tell there's a floor here obviously it's a small arena and tape uh, seats around the, in a u-shape in the balcony but people can buy tables on the floor and they can have a little food they can have a glass of wine and enjoy the concert and then of course the orchestra is up on the stage there and the Civic has a wonderful sound system they have a wonderful mm -hmm. light system it's worked really well for us. Now I've never heard of that before with having tables watching the symphony orchestra but I really like that idea. <laughs> you can kind of sit with your friends, yes. sip a little wine, have right. a little hors d'oeuvres. That's and, really nice. And a lot of people think well maybe they don't, they don't pay attention to the orchestra but they, our audiences are really wonderful. So the doors open at six o'clock, the concerts are at seven, so they have an hour to, to mix and mingle as much mm -hmm. as they want and then the concert starts at seven and then we usually have a 15 to 20 minute intermission and then they can they can mix and mingle at that time too. Now, 
Now, the last concert, it sounds like so much fun. Well, it it's a film fest. Yes. With uh, Harry Potter. Right. And, so tell it's us a little bit about well, it. Well, what it is, it, most of the music is by John Williams, mm -hmm. what you know is America's premier composer with all the Olympic themes and all the movie themes. And he's 90 years old now. And I think he's booked four years out with <laughs> Oh my gosh. You can believe that. So still very much in demand. But Carolyn is a big John Williams groupie. She just thinks he's great, as, as do as, most as, of our musicians yes. in the audience. So, uh, but it's not all John Williams. So for instance, we're doing a piece from Oscar Wilde. We're doing a piece from Magnificent Seven. But then we are doing Spider-Man, which he composed. We are doing Harry Potter, which he composed. And the entire second half is a Star Wars suite, which, which is a compilation of, a, of, of the various Star Wars movies that John Williams composed. The other thing that we're doing is we're encouraging character costumes. Oh, so that's fun. So whether you're young or old, come as your favorite Harry Potter uh, character, come as your favorite Star Wars character, and Carolyn has threatened to do the same. So I, was, I was about to ask, <laughs> okay, now who are you coming as? Because oh, you're the executive I'm not a, director, I'm not a come on. costume character. I'm going to come as the executive director. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Carolyn take care of that for me. Okay, that is a lot of fun. And when is that concert? It's Saturday, April the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Doors open at 6. Uh, the concert starts at 7. People can get their tickets by going online to our website, which is just LCSO for LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra, lcso.net. Okay, now, real quick, when does the new season start? Well, the new season officially uh, starts in September of 22 with our Who's Your Star event. And it will go from September to the end of April. Okay. Of 23. All right, wonderful. Well, Tim, thank you so much. Thank it's you. like I said, it's been great seeing you in person. <laughs> nice to see you too. It's, you know, and it's going to be a great content. And thanks again for a wonderful season. And here's to many more. Oh, I hope, sure hope so. Thank you. I always love the arts, and we're back at the Box Factory for the Arts with St. Joe, Michigan. And uh, you guys have some amazing exhibitions that are going on now, as well as what's coming up. But one in particular is very unique that's happening now, and it is a mural. And this is a limited time um, opportunity to see this mural. And I have with us the actual artist, as well as uh, Jane, who's gonna be joining us here too. It is such a special piece and it has so much meaning behind it. Generally speaking, what is the name of the piece? And tell us about how it came to be, because this was a commission piece, correct? Right, it's a commission uh, by some folks that uh, live at the Jefferson uh, condominiums, and it was an old school. And so they wanted to uh, do something dealing with the school, and we weren't sure what it was going to be. So um, they had some old photos of the teacher in her A day working, uh, teaching with the kids. And so uh, I looked at some of those, and then we started talking about some of the other things they had in the classroom and so on. So. That's how it kind of develops as it goes. School is so different nowadays. So being able yeah. to see this mural and, and reminding folks of, you know, where we came from, but also teaching our younger generation where we came from, too. Right. There's a lot of just talk about going to school at Jefferson, you know, and everybody's, I think, uh, reminiscing about their, you know, days in kindergarten. So a lot of folks went to this school. It seemed like when I was working on it, they said, you know, uh, gee, we went to that school. I was just about everybody said, oh, we went to that school or somebody's going there. Or, you know, so everybody seemed to be familiar with it. It's like a flashback. Now, how big is the yeah. mural and how long did it take you to complete it? It's probably, it's roughly about eight feet square. It's probably eight by seven or something. Um, I probably started getting things, uh, organizing things, trying to find the vintage things in October of last year, and then working on it fairly steadily till well, probably into March. So six or seven months there, anyway, through the winter. Almost time that's, that's amazing, and it is beautiful. And like we said, it is a limited time exhibition because it is going to actually be moving to its permanent home, which will no longer be open to the public. Right, right, that's why we added here. It was a, Oh, Great opportunity to show the piece so, uh, so other people could see it before it actually goes over to the school. Yeah. Well, especially for those folks who have been to Jefferson School in their lifetime, you want to make sure that you do see that exhibit. It goes through April 24th. Is that about right? It's the last Sunday of the month, correct. Perfect. And, and Jean, I know there's other things going on at the Box Factory as well, too. I, one of the things that I love to talk about is the student arts, the up and coming artists. And that's something that you guys are showcasing right now too. Tell us a bit more about that. 
Sure. So last month we actually had the elementary school show and then that came down at the end of the month. And now we have the middle school and the high school students and they will be up again till the end of the month. And they're on two levels and three galleries. And I can't remember if I heard how many pieces were installed, but it's a great show. It's so much fun to look at the artwork and we have video components as well and 3D as well as the 2D art. And it's just a lot of fun to see what the kids are doing. And then a little bit something we did this year was in, we invited the teachers if they wanted to exhibit a piece of their work. And so we had several that took us up on that. So we have several um, pieces of artwork from the, the actual instructors for the, the students. That's always incredible. And you can kind of see the inspiration. And I just love seeing how kids think differently than, you know, new age art, if you will. It is, it's really fun. It's fun to see what looks familiar and what looks like, yes, these are teens, this is their world. It's really fun. It's just a little bit of a glimpse into their minds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And then moving into our next exhibit, uh, this is something that's just being in process right now, and they're gonna be displayed soon. Mac in the box, can you talk to us more about that? Sure, so this is our annual competition that we actually have prize, cash prize money. Um, it's called, it's the Michigan <laughs> Annual Art Competition. We have eight categories that will all win a $200 prize per category, and then Best in Show, which has a $1,000 prize, which is, exciting for me. Um, we have um, over 160 artists who submitted work. And out of that, there were over 250 pieces of work. Sent it off to the judge the other day, and she's got it for a week now, and then I'll get it back and we'll see who made it into the, the exhibition. A lot of nice, nice work. It was really fun to see some familiar names from last year when I worked on it, and then to see, you know, a lot of new names this year. But very excited. Our opening is um, May 13th from 5.30 to 7, and it'll be up until July 3rd. We wanted to get okay. through, you know, two of the holidays so people can see and have a chance to see it and uh but yeah and then our hours right now were um for the student show we're open thursdays from noon to six and then friday saturday sunday from noon to four and then in um, may once the mac shows up we'll be extending our hours and that'll be on our website okay awesome and what's your website so people can get more information there too boxfactoryforthearts.org Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm so excited uh, to hear about all these exhibits that you have going on. Again, uh, some of them are ending April 24th, so you want to make sure that you do head up to St. Joe to the Box Factory for the Arts and get your art in. Um, and then we will see you soon for the Mac in the Box, too, and all of featuring all of our local artists. That's really what it's all about. That's amazing. Great. Thanks so much. So many fun things to do here in Michigan. In fact, I'm standing here at the Barnes in Napanee because they have an event coming up. We're going to be talking about that on next week's show. Make sure that you tune in there too. So we hope you enjoy all that Michigan has to offer. And don't forget, if you have some ideas you want to share them with us, you can do that by going onto social media or sending us an email. We'd love to hear what we can explore and share with our community too. Thanks for joining us. Experience Michiana is made possible in part by the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County and the Indiana Arts Commission, which receives support from the State of Indiana and the National Endowment for the Arts. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.